Well, the, the top 20 uh, critical security controls were always designed around priority. And what should be the priority in our business? Well, from our perspective, it's what are the bad guys doing to us right now? How can I take that knowledge and deny them the advantage? And so to do that, you have to have folks who understand what that problem is, who track it for a living, who are analyzing it, trying to find root causes, trying to understand the fundamentals. You know, we, ha we live in a world where we're literally generating millions of data points about the threat every day. But none of us has the time or the energy or the people to sort through all that. We have to manage that but at the same time, we have to think more analytically about what is the root cause here? How do I stop not these things one at a time, but many of them with some straightforward actions? So that was the motivator behind the top 20 critical security controls. How do I bring priority and focus to this problem? A, that in the original NSA model, we developed an analytic threat model to bring some notion of sort of high, medium, low, or very high to, uh, to the controls as a guide to help people think about that. The top 20 were not intended to be a linear model of 1 to 20, start with number 1, work your way to the end. But clearly there are things that are more urgent, more important, and provide greater value. And so you can see that in the mapping that we built around the top 20 critical security controls. And that, that provides you help in understanding the controls from the perspective of what value do they give you in terms of mitigating threat. But now when an enterprise wants to take them and apply them, you have to look at reality, right? The reality of the budget that you have, the attention span of your executives, the training of your people, the existing technical base that you already have in place. And so you're gonna to have to look at priorities from that uh, practical implementation aspect also. But again, the whole focus is around how do I stop the problems that I see out there based upon real analysis, not based upon the gut feel of any one person. Uh, for a, a look at where we think we're going with this, uh, you can look at something called the, the uh, Verizon Data Breach Investigations Report for 2013. So for the, uh, Verizon every year produces an annual summary of uh, incidents that they analyzed, both theirs and their partners, to look at uh, what actually happened, what was the root cause, what was the loss, what was the uh, implications of it, and they do a great job of summarizing and developing trends out of that, uh, out of that data. And at the end of their report, they make a statement about it is our opinion that these are the most important classes of attack based upon the data that we observed over the last year. What we did this year with Verizon for the first time was have a partnership where when they identify those classes of attack, we map them directly into the applicable critical security controls. So it's typically a one to, to many mapping. So the idea is if you believe that these are the classes of problems to be worried about, either based upon the Verizon input or your own analysis, this gives you a structured way to tap into the, all these bright minds who've decided that critical controls help you manage that particular problem. So the idea is to make this a simpler way to align defensive choices with the actual problem that you're trying to solve. That is, this is a different way to think about the priority of the controls uh, using data, real data about threat to drive those choices. We're gonna do a similar project with uh, several other companies that are in the business of collecting this type of data, analyzing it, and producing annual reports. And we think that will provide a really powerful uh, story and message about why do we need these controls? Well, it's not a group of people in a room dreaming them up. It's really about the data that we observe from people that we're paying, basically, to uh, understand this problem on our behalf. The existence of the top 20 critical security controls has been really important in the federal space. Uh, not everybody aligns with them. Uh, some people see them as being somehow in, in conflict with NIST directives. I don't really see that. I, I see them as, as being an overlay that helps people to understand if, if I have to achieve all of this stuff to be compliant on the NIST side, where should I start so that I have the greatest impact with my limited resources? Because it's going to be very hard to hit 100% compliance. So how do I make sure that the steps that I'm taking are achieving the, the greatest benefit uh, for each incremental dollar that I can add? And so having the 20 critical security controls presented in a way that, that represents where the greatest threats are coming from, where the attacks are coming from, and providing that in a stack-ranked sort of a way 
gives security executives a, a way to think about the variety of investments that they need to make and to make sure that those investments are balanced, that they're not spending uh, a whole lot of money on some hot new technology that comes in around 13, 14, 15, but they're also addressing the proactive technologies at the top of the list that help them to harden their environments, reduce the attack surface, so those later technologies are more effective.